and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Uh, welcome to The Talk, I'm Ian Collins. Now the government will investigate three Muslim groups after revealing its new official definition of extremism. Also, Prince William and Prince Harry will both appear at a Diana memorial event this evening with Harry showing up via video link after William departs. And we'll have the latest on Meghan Markle's mysterious new lifestyle brand. I can hardly wait. Joining me on the panel, Emma Wolf, JJ Anasiobi, Salma Shah and Isabel Oakshot. But first, Michael Gove has used the ancient loophole of parliamentary privilege to unveil three Muslim groups as divisive Islamist organizations. This is part of a clampdown on extremism in the wake of the Israel-Hamas war. The community secretary also singled out two far-right groups suspected of intimidating minorities as he pledged to name and shame those seeking to subvert democracy and promote hatred. The move follows the announcement of a new tighter definition of non-violent extremism, which officials will use to identify and publish a blacklist of both Islamist and far-right organizations. Despite warnings, the updated definition could vilify the wrong people. But Gove insists his intention was not to stifle freedom of speech. The proposed definition will hold that extremism is the promotion or advancement of an ideology based on violence, hatred or intolerance, that aims to negate or destroy the fundamental rights and freedoms of others, or undermine, overturn or replace the UK system of liberal parliamentary democracy and democratic rights, or intentionally create a permissive environment for others to achieve these results. It is important to stress that we are in no way intending to restrict freedom of expression, religion or belief. Well, officials will be instructed to cut off government funding and block all meetings with any of the groups listed to ensure they are not inadvertently giving them a platform or legitimacy to advance extremist ideology. Some of the uh, groups mentioned and some of the groups that I'm sure will discuss, and I think, Isabel, you'll probably shine a bit more light on this, uh, people for years have been saying, you know, why are you dealing with that group? Why are you seeking wisdom and advice from that particular group over there when everybody on the planet knows they're a bit dodgy? Um, we've seen this in lots of areas, and I know that, the, you know, the far-right issue is clearly something that is massively concerning, and any sort of extremism, wherever it comes from, should be investigated. But there is a real sense, isn't there, with this, certainly from the Muslim community, that actually this is really singling out Islam. Well, I don't know whether that feels to me a particularly reasonable concern. I mean, a lot of the emphasis today appears to have been on the threat from the far right. I mean, it's not the far right that are marching week in, week out in this uh, incredibly aggressive, uh, intimidating way in some cases, of course. We must acknowledge there are many peaceful marchers who have the right intentions, but each and every week now there are fringe individuals and organisations who are making particularly London but other places, are pretty parts of London, pretty unpleasant. So I don't think it would be fair to say that this new definition in any way singles out um, Muslim groups over far-right groups or other unpleasant organisations. Um, my concern is that none of it adds up to a row of beans. I don't think this is going to make an iota of difference to what we see on our streets week in, week out. I listened to Michael Gove this morning admitting that it wouldn't cover uh, or make it any more illegal than it is already to beam vile anti-Semitic slogans onto Big Ben or indeed to chant those slogans. So it, this seems to me a classic case of a government <coughs> trying to do something, trying to be seen to do something, and I think it'll be completely ineffectual. Yeah, who's, it, who's it aimed at? I have no idea, but the, the part that worries me the most is where they say the promotion of hatred or intolerance. I do hate Just Stop Oil. 
and I am intolerant to them. And if I, if I want to go on Twitter and say, I hate Just Stop Oil, I wish somebody would, would get them off my off our streets, is this now going to... Will I, will I now be classed as intolerant and hateful? And is that going to get me in trouble for saying something that I think is completely... Actually, you know, all fair? it will do... <laughs> and I don't know whether this is a bad thing for you. All it will do is stop the government from engaging. So, to Isabel's point... <laughs> that is a bad thing for me. This is actually an internal edict for government. Yeah. So, this is about who in government can actually speak to certain organisations. So, you know, uh, if you have the Muslim Council of Britain, for example, who want to engage with government, are civil servants and ministers allowed to do that, basically? Now, building on that point, there's a freedom of speech argument here, which is slightly negated by the fact that it's only an internal government memo, basically. There is the question about, you know, how, how certain groups are targeted and affected. Michael Gove was at pains to say this wasn't about Islam, it was about Islamism. Um, but ultimately, I think the issue here is twofold. One, if you're going to take up time in politics at this moment when mm. you're in an election year, is this the thing that you want to focus on, an internal government issue? <laughs> and secondly, you know, it, it, it doesn't mean anything to most people. That's my point. It really does. That's my point, especially with and, Michael Gove but we being know, the advocate. He sounds just like a we kind know, of ludicrously intellectual lawyer. No one understands it's very, any It's of very this. odd. They need to stop redefining it. No one's <laughs> calling for a, a new definition. No. They're calling for action and for yeah. some policing. Um, but this is a hobby horse of Michael Gove's. It's not really his... He shouldn't be on this at all, actually. He should be focusing on levelling up, which he's completely failed to do. Mm. And I just think this is the oddest thing that they're focusing on. It's, it's really like weird. It's like when they start talking about the ownership of British newspapers and you think, really? Yeah. Country's I really falling that. apart and you're talking about this probably months out from an election. But that's not what people in the country are asking. I, I, I agree, but I, you know, a lot of the stuff that's going on I thought was already you know, on the borders of illegality. I mean, some of the stuff you just referenced, you know, sticking anti-Semitic uh, slogans onto the side of Parliament. Mm. Um, Talk TV did an investigation just after the uh, Israel-Gaza war began, looking at what was being said in some mosques in this country. Yes. I mean, it was well, we know absolutely horrific. You can go on YouTube and find <clears throat> this stuff. And that is... I, I would have thought that's already illegal, that is. some of this stuff. And nothing is being done about that. And that, I think, is what's really riled people. And that does kind of mobilise the, the far right in many respects, and no-one's going to support those guys. But it does clearly fire people up to think, well, hang on a second. We, we live in this very sensitive world where, you know, stereotyping is akin to second-degree murder, and yet you can stand in a, a, a pulpit or a religious a house of religion and state that, you know, gays have no right to oxygen, women shouldn't be doing X, Y, Z, and goodness knows what else. But is there a danger when we have the government deciding who they can and can't speak to? Should they be the ones to decide that? Uh, was, it, was it last year or year before Tobias Selwood was praising the Taliban and saying how actually they've made so many great changes? Is mm -hmm. that going to fall under this new rule? Would, would he be in trouble for saying that then in future? Like, I, I, I just I think it's going to cause more division in the long run if we're going to say these guys are bad and we're not going to engage them but at I, all. But I also think that if you are trying to make inroads with any organisation or you're trying to turn something around or you're trying to influence it, if government is banned from speaking to those organisations, how do you create a dialogue that basically That's says... Exactly yeah, but saying. it's also about can't... access to funding and things like that. It's about yeah. Who, yeah. You can, who you can kind of have those meetings with. But as you say, it's internal guidance. This is guidance from the government to itself. Yeah. So for Michael Gove to make a massive big deal about yeah. it, it's literally what Isabel said, they need to be seen to be doing something. Ever since Sunak stood outside da uh, Downing Street on the Friday afternoon and said, we're going to crack down on it. It made no difference done, at and all. And they've done yeah. absolutely nothing. But well, they're, they're kind We've of had two they're weekends out of, of, more, of more marches, well, you know, two more Saturdays yeah. of marches, in which one of them, we saw um, a man holding the sign saying Hamas is terrorist. And he's the one that got persecuted. Well, look, this is all about Rishi Sunak's position, isn't it? And we're going to talk a bit about that now because the extremism overhaul comes as Sunak insists that the Tory party is united, uh, despite reports that cabinet ministers uh, have discussed his future as prime minister. The talks are thought to have been prompted by concerns about Sunak's political judgment and against the wider backdrop of the Tories performing very badly in the polls. Senior ministers are worried uh, that the pressure on the PM's position could become unsustainable, uh, depending on the success of the Rwanda policy and the outcome of May local elections and, frankly, a bunch of other things. Uh, they also reportedly considered and been thinking about whether 
another Tory leader could actually help uh, hinder Labour's progress. Um, and that progress was also hindered today on the Labour side by Diane Abbott lashing out at the party hierarchy for what she called shocking racism in the wake of the Tory donor scandal. She's an independent MP at the moment and she turned her fire on Sir Keir Starmer, highlighting his reluctance to call out racism and sexism after the entrepreneur Frank Hester allegedly said Abbott made him want to, quote, hate all black women. Well, there's a lot going on there, isn't there, to yep. talk about. I mean, this talk tonight, a lot of sort of speculation, in fact, all day swirling around Westminster as to whether Rishi Sunak might uh, make use of his power to call a sudden early election. He doesn't have to have an election for the best part of the rest of this year. Um, really, if he wanted it to run right to the wire, he could go right up until next January, couldn't he? Um, and why has that all come to a head now? Well, it's a combination of disastrous polling at the moment, um, but also apparent new threat to his own position. So a lot of people saying in the Tory party privately, how can we go into the next election with this failing leader? Um, so shall we just try to oust him? Um, he, in number 10, feeling pretty embattled, uh, has got one kind of trump card, as it were. It's not much of a trump card, which is to say, well, you know, sorry, guys, if you want to try and depose me, I'm just going to take it to the country. Um, I can't see it happening, can you? No, I definitely can't see it happening. We but could I, be proved wrong really quickly, so by the way, so true. we need some caveats That's here. true. Look, could I, you can always... A prime minister is always going to choose to go to the country whenever suits him or her best. I mean, that's just obviously the thing that they're going to do. I mean, we had a fixed-term Parliaments Act and that was sort of um, overturned recently as well, in recent years. So I get that he's, wanted, he's going to want to give himself options. What I don't get is Tory MPs thinking another leadership contest mm. is going to help this Bonkers. situation any. Yeah. So I think that has got to be kind of Killed addressed. <laughs> and just for the sake of the country, <laughs> just please, guys, stop doing that. There is, isn't there a... And we've talked about this before, that if you're a kind of socialist and therefore, by definition, a moron, but if that is your, <laughs> um, if that is your political belief, then you always need an enemy. You're always arguing. There always has to be somebody. You've got to, you know, you construct one if you can't find one. You make it up if you can't source one out. But there's also a group of Tories who kind of do the same thing within the Tory party. They have to be in a... They're in a perpetual row. There's just some of those guys on the back benches. The Tories have always divided up, as all parties have, on various things. Europe has obviously been the one that's, you know, in, in the last <coughs> sort of 40 years or so, that has always monkeyed around with the Conservative Party. They've never quite got it right. But there's always that contingent of characters who sit there on those back benches, no matter how good it is, and, who cannot help themselves. And the funniest thing is, they're such wets. I mean, they don't do anything. I, would, I wouldn't mind if there was always this core of, like, rebels who were ousting their leaders, but they sort of... A mm, few letters go in, nothing really happens. A few I mean, letters go in. The idea that Boris these... went, Truss went. They're, they're, they've got rid of a, of a couple of people at least. Uh, wouldn't you argue that, that was kind of their <laughs> own fault? <laughs> to vote against but, but people, but people, nah, still, can't but, be bothered. People still resigned for, for Boris to have to then step down himself. But the letter what? story comes around as it you know, comes every, around, every few weeks. 10, 20, like, 20, the letters are going enough. in, are well, they? You don't hear any from, from, from what, what's been said, they're trying to. If they do want to oust him, they're looking for someone who can just go in without having to do. Um, I mean, a, that a is not good. Who are they? Do you think that's going to make any difference? It might. Well, depending on who they get. Barring a miracle, this election is lost for them. But this isn't about them not losing. This is about them reducing the damage um, overall. It's not, they're not going to win the election. This is to try and stop Labour from taking over everywhere. However, with Sunak, regardless of that, with Sunak, I don't feel any pity for him if he gets stabbed in the back. That's politics. Well, he's he done stabbed, it to plenty of he people did, Exactly. Himself. He stabbed Javid yeah. and then Boris Johnson too yeah. and Lord knows whoever else. So yeah. this is uh, a making of his, of his own doing, I'm afraid. But the idea that they're now questioning Sunak's political judgement, well, what took them so long? It's a bit late now to be talking about this. Yeah. Well, look, these are people thrashing around just wondering oh. how on earth to save their own skin. And there's a real dilemma there. It's whether you, you know, you go early and try and save a few seats or you just cling on to power at least you've got your trappings yeah. of office and your salaries a for another I, six I, I, to nine months. I do months. think that the hope is that actually, and this is, you've got to prove the negative, right? Is it better to go now or wait? So you don't know that it's going to be any better in October, but you definitely know that it's not great now or November or whenever yeah. they're thinking about having Well, I was going to say, if they, if you, some of those MPs, I mean, they're all, there's a lot, they're all talk, some of these guys, but if 
Rishi Sunak called an election, like, you know, in about half an hour's time, they would be quivering like a discarded... So, they, so they've only got... That's he, how bad it would be. He's only got a few days in which to do this if it's going to coincide with the local elections and the mayoral elections at the beginning yeah, of May. He's not going to do it, is he? It's not going to happen. No, I, I would say, on balance, probably not. Could he go, just on that point, could he... If, if he went to January 2025, which he can... I think that's inconceivable. It's inconceivable, yeah. but technically, if he did, would he have to call it before Christmas? I think so. What's the, do we know... Yeah, you, 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 you've got six yeah. weeks. Yeah, it, yeah, but how, how far into... So he'd have to call it sort of like the... Second week of December. Christmas Eve or something. <laughs> so, so, so that would be everyone's Christmas sort of a bit miserable as Just well. before again, you, you watch you're not the Christmas want... edition of... You're not going to want an election in December either, are you? I mean, the country would be pretty unhappy about that. So it's got to be, I think... I mean, I'm not really sure I want an election in November. And you think it's Santa Claus at the door and you open it up and it's yet another local Yeah, you want Christmas cards, not your local MP. (laughs) Okay, coming up, Meghan Markle's comeback begins. The Duchess of Sussex has quietly launched her new lifestyle brand on social media. We're unveiling this next on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, missing. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t- when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. Was supposed it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. back to the talk. Prince William and Prince Harry will appear at the same event today, a memorial for their mother, Princess Diana, in London. However, the feuding royal brothers won't risk running into each other, as Harry will appear via video link after William has given a speech in person. 
he will appear alone while wife Kate continues to recover from abdominal surgery. Kate wasn't far from William's mind during his visit to a youth group in London today. The Prince of Wales played basketball and pool with youngsters at the West Centre, where he told children his wife is the arty one. Not so good at Photoshop, though. The heir and the spare haven't been reunited since the Duke of Sussex came back for his grandmother's funeral in 2022. I'm so surprised. I'm only surprised about this because they're not even going to be physically there together. Mm. So what difference would it have made for William just to sit there at the back of the room whilst Harry's on screen? They're there to honour their mum and they can't even put aside this feud. I say they, it's William, one presumes, since William's one is actually going to be there. William's one is actually going to have to leave so Harry can do his speech. They can't put aside this feud even uh, for the... But Harry won't appear until William's gone, apparently. So you're, so, so you're saying it's Harry. I'm saying it's William. I Are think... you saying... No, but here's so, the thing. Sorry, do you have to you're pick wrong. a side? Do you have to pick a side in this? Yes. Because, like, no, quite no, frankly... No, JJ is wrong. <laughs> it's just... Do you not think it's going to be super because awkward to sit there every whilst camera. everybody knows and everyone's going to sort of focus on his... Re I wouldn't want to do that, you know? And, every like, camera simply... would be on William's exactly. face. You know what the Why would you would want do. That? They would be saying, look at him having to watch no, his brother. because because this is not an event that's outside outdoors. This is a closed event. Perhaps won't be in there. It'll be the, the photographers who are accredited. Oh, you think people aren't going to have their, like, camera phones up and stuff trying to sort of take every I think if, aspect I think, I think of if William existence. Stood, I think if William was stood at the back of the room, this would not be an issue. That wouldn't, it, would, it really would not be that big a deal. Yeah. It's, I mean, the idea that they can't get... It just, just can't shows you the depth just of... Come over but it just, shows you the depth of how bad this does. row is. It completely does. But one together thing they ought to be able to unite some, on well, is that's to, the point. Their mother. Mother. Yeah, to honour their mother. Yeah. Exactly. So why can't he just come over and they go through the motions and be civil to one another yeah. and then go their separate it's ways? It's so immature, How actually. hard can that be? It's really? so immature like, that they Do you have siblings? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got siblings as well. We all have siblings. There's no you. There's no one that you love more, but when you're cross with each other, there's no one you hate more Yeah, but it doesn't mean you can't be in the same room. For the sake of your mother. But I don't, not every sibling is going to do that, so I don't see why we hold, hold well, them to not, a different standard. Because they're like the royals. Yeah. Be, but being <laughs> royal doesn't mean that you can't not be angry at your own sibling. That's a personal relationship, and they need to handle it yeah. however they're going to yeah, handle it. Yeah, but it's it. very public as well. It's all being played out in public, and there's something quite immature, as Jojo is saying, about the fact that they can't, even for the sake of just putting on a front, being bigger... You know, they can hate each other in private if they want yeah. to. I wonder, actually, if it's something even to go down the conspiracy route. I wonder if it's something even more than what we know from Spare and the dog bowl fight there and the royal racism row and all of that. I wonder if it's even worse because William seems unable. Mm. I don't know, maybe Harry too, but William seems particularly angry and unable yeah. to get past this. It's so it's so tragic as well as being ludicrous. It is. I just feel really sorry for, for Charles, actually. I mean, you yeah. know, it must be just so painful for him that his two children can't come to terms. Yeah. yeah. It is yeah. painful, actually. And he I mean, can't over, fix over, it. I mean, it, can it really... I You've mean, got okay. two boys. Harry, I've got two boys. Imagine yeah. if when they were grown up, they Do you know what, even now, you know, because obviously they're, they're two boys, so they argue about stupid stuff yeah. all the time. Yeah. And even that bothers me. Yeah. You know, yeah, I just no, think, I, you know, I, come on, it's your little brother, look after him, I be agree. nice. I agree. I've got two him. girls who fight the whole time. And it would you don't break want to see it, do my you? heart if they are doing this when they're grown up. Yeah, correct. You know, yeah. kids fight, siblings yeah, fight. Yeah. That's normal. It'd be a bit weird if they didn't, frankly. But it's still painful and frustrating Correct. and really, really just damn annoying. Which does lead you to it? believe that this, you know, at the risk of repeating what I think we all agree on, but the, the, the dog bowl, it, it's got to be more than... Yeah, OK, really Harry good. sang like a canary in his book, you know, they flogged some books as a result and it got a lot of copy. Uh, I, a lot of things, I, but it must I be more that, than that. I think that's enough, actually. I, I really <laughs> think... I agree. You know, I, no, that would, that would rile me <laughs> for a long gather, time, but on occasion like part this, Part of William's problem is that uh, he feels that Harry and... Harry's allowed Meghan to besmirch Kate's reputation yeah, I think along the way. Do with, yeah. them, with I think their that's wives great as well. I mean, that's not unreasonable. And, you know... It's not unreasonable. Me Meghan, well, she was never up to the job, was she? She couldn't do it. She Didn't sure. bottled it. She wow. licked it. She wasn't capable of doing it. And that's because she I wasn't I think she bored. was capable of it. She just didn't want to do it. You well, know, she was capable for, you know, for the the, the, the fun stuff. Yeah, know, I think, yeah, she thought the, she wanted to do the You're very but famous. Actually... She, wanted to be a, she wanted to be famous as a kid. She became as more famous than she ever yeah. realised she could be. I yeah. didn't look much like it. Look, the thing is, Collins, I've slagged off your wife many a time. You and I hate <laughs> it for that. True. We've come on this show, <laughs> but a difference aside for the viewers, and we get over it. Yeah, well, yeah. it wasn't the slagging off. It was when I caught you in my kitchen frying eggs that morning. <laughs> Over that, easy. <laughs> that was the bit that bothered me. Um, there is some breaking news from Montecito, where um, 
Oh, Meghan Markle appears to have launched her long-awaited Instagram-based yes. business with a new video, uh, an account called American Riviera Orchard. Oh, wow. ..has posted a video that seems to show the Duchess preparing food at her Montecito home. Why is she wearing a ball gown? What, what is she doing Why is she there? preparing food? I thought it was a lifestyle. Don't you just saw her around? The brand's Instagram <laughs> account <laughs> already has more than 23,000 followers and its bio reads, by Meghan, Duchess of Sussex. It's mm. weird. In Can you just confirm the name? Was Why it Riviera Orchard or...? It was by the Orchard. account is called American Riviera Orchard. It basically sounds like an old people's home. Yeah, That's what it there's says. a tra well a trademark <laughs> application is currently awaiting examination for American Riviera Orchard. Reveals the brand plans to sell tableware, drinkware, including decanters, kitchen linens, edible treats such as jellies, jams, marmalades, and spreads. Uh, and the trademark application is also seeking approval for cookbooks. And rumor has it exactly. that Megan is considering selling bottled. Harry's tears. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds Very like good. exactly like um, what Pippa Middleton did. Do you remember yes. she wrote yes. that book called Celebrate? Yes. I didn't Celebrate. I had to have a party. Yeah. I actually bought and it. it. Oh, did I you? bought it. I don't think we've ever used it. It just, oh. got, it just sat on the shelf. You're one of the ten people who bought that book. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. literally yeah. bought that book. Look, I think, I think this is going to do really well for Meghan Markle. Like, you think so? Yeah. Generally, in this side of, this side of the, the Atlantic, we're not huge fans of her. No, but... but yeah, but she does have a huge. What's the, what's the name of the big American woman who uh, cooking? Uh, went Martha, Stewart. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. She went to prison. This, she, yeah, well, we can only. Is Megan is Megan <laughs> heading? in the direction of Martha Stewart. I think... Know, America needs a new Do you Martha know that Stewart? big sort of... I'm not going to name the brand, because I don't know if we're allowed to, but that sort of big farmhouse, deli kind of thing yes. that you have around the Cotswolds in this country? Is she going for, like, an American version of that? I reckon so. Where, like, little cashmere jumpers for whole... babies cost, like, 250 quid. <laughs> yeah, that kind yeah. of aspirational, lifestyle yes. you thing. Can, you can buy a jogging outfit for your dog. Yeah. And, you know, cost and you, jellies you know, and jams and grand. spreads and that. But, so they're going for that sort of middle stroke, you know, well, middle class in America means something slightly different, but, you know, for the very, you know, fairly opulent and well-off yeah, market. Yeah, very pricey. I Everything think it's in the beige Mar and I, no, I genuinely believe it's the Martha Stewart slippers that are, are, are waiting somebody to dip their royal toe into. I think people will buy and stuff from it, even in this country. I think loads of people are going to buy stuff yeah. from this. And also, that whole kind of, like, Montecito lifestyle, like, what is Meghan wearing? What does Meghan eat? Yeah. What does... People will buy it. And I, I, I'm predicting now that I'm going to go on that website with such cynicism and I will probably order some <laughs> jam and pay all the import duties of my family <laughs> A to have it shipped here. And I regret that already, but I know that's going to happen because people get sucked into all of that. I will you... buy some cashmere joggers. But if it's... I mean, Laid back, got... easy California you have... vibe. <laughs> would you have your kitchen, you know, your frying pans up there? I mean, with, you know... By Megan on the spatula. back. Spatula. By Megan. <laughs> would you have that? I mean, stick with why, your La Cruze, I would suggest. Have, why does she have a horror voice for <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> From the people that he bought you. He specialises in these very yeah. weird yeah. voiceovers. From the producers of Spare. <laughs> Listen, guys, I, I, unfortunately, I, we're going to have to take this down to a much more serious okay. note And that's now. not a bad thing. So, um... We're moving on to um, a, a very interesting story today. Um, the Metropolitan Police have launched more than 700 investigations after their new anti-corruption hotline was contacted nearly 3,000 times in its first 18 months of operation. The service was launched after the corrupt cop scandals, including the murder of Sarah Everard by serving officer Wayne Cousins and the offences of another Met Police officer, David Carrick, shook the force to its core. Potential crimes that could be reported to the new hotline include officers taking bribes, abusing their positions or mistreating their partners. Meanwhile, the Met has agreed to pay £10,000 in damages to the woman arrested at the Sarah Everard vigil. That's Jennifer Edmonds. She was detained and charged with breaching COVID restrictions at, at the Clapham Common event. She later sued the force for breaching her human rights, false imprisonment, assault and malicious prosecutions. So... Incredibly serious, but I'm going to start by saying I'm actually very pleased at seeing these numbers because it feels to me like this isn't a sop, that the Met are actually taking nope. this seriously. Completely disagree. I'll let you finish, but completely uh, disagree. That's good of you. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, look, 18 months, we've got, you know, these complaints in. 
where they're being public about it, we are actually having some transparency from the Met on this. I feel like that is a start. It might not be the best start. It's coming from a low base, let's be completely honest. But I feel that that is at least one marker. So this is why I'm against it, or, or I think it's um, not, not a worth a bean, would you say, earlier? No, no not, a, not worth a row of not beans. Not worth a row of beans. Yeah. So Crime Stoppers, the charity, are going to be manning these hotlines and checking the emails and everything else. And they, then they'll take these cases to the Met and to other police forces. And the police people are going to police themselves. This has been the problem. Yeah. The... We, are, we are just going to interrupt you, JJ. That's Prince William we are seeing now. These are live pictures of William arriving to this event this evening, the Diana Memorial event. Uh, and there he is, out of the royal car, straight into the building. And, of course, this is the event that his brother Harry will appear at, although that'll be via video link, and even then it won't be at the same time. One will appear after the other one has left. But that's at the Science Museum, live in London. In the meantime, back to more Claptrap from JJ. <laughs> the point being, if the police are marking their own homework, nothing really changes. They're not marking their own they homework. Are, oh, well, here we go. Do you really the boy think... in blue. Do you really think... Do you really think... to defend them. What a surprise. Do you really think that in the wake of all of this, against the backdrop that everything has gone on... Yeah. ..that firstly, they will even allow themselves to mark their homework? Well, that's, what's, that, that's, what, that's what's happening. No, because you will, there will be other people and there will be a civilian presence and there will be checks and balances in doing this. But even if they did, right now, the idea... I mean, you'd have to be at the, the very high end of stupidity to somehow go, oh, we've Smith got Billy. one here about PC Smithers, we'll just hide that one in there because he was yeah. a mate of mine, went to police school with him. This I is what's happening. That is not going <laughs> to yeah, happen. But this is, this what's is a charter to dob police officers in it. No. Some will be bad and need reporting. Others will find themselves on the receiving end of very dicey, very suspicious it claims. Is, it is no good. And it'll be a waste of time. It is no good having these reports given to the police and saying to the police, now go and, and investigate Hold this yourself. Hold on, but, but Ian's but, right. But, but, no, but that is what's happening. Yeah, I, but Ian, Ian isn't right. Ian's wrong. Of course I'm right. <laughs> no, but Ian's right on this Never. one, even if he is in the pay of the popo. <laughs> <laughs> the pay, um, I've got a cop. No, <laughs> after the Cousins thing and after Carrick, I don't think right now that they're... That, that, yes, they may be marking their own homework, but they're going to take these cases seriously. Yeah. I think it's incredibly depressing and shocking that we need this anonymous tip-off hotline that they can't just report, that there can't be proper whistleblowing within the police. But it's really, really good because they are... I mean, they need to take action, but they are actually taking it seriously. And we've had bad apples and wrong ones and people openly knowing about people like Cousins in the police for years. At least now people can say, these guys are looking at images of, I don't know, rape victims. These guys are circulating. We know there's, there's the been trail. some awful, there's the... awful stuff going on in the Met Isabel, Police specifically. Isabel, please bring well, some, some sense just, to this. No, I'm just thinking on a kind of really simple level here. If the Met Police are investigating all these tip-offs about themselves and each other, mm -hmm. how are they going to have any time to investigate crimes involving Good anyone point. outside the Met Police? Yeah. I mean, they've all, they're already desperately thinly stretched, they tell us. What we know as voters and population is that if we get robbed or things happen, yeah, we're happens. very unlikely to get much satisfaction through mm -hmm. the criminal justice system unless it's something really, really, really serious. So I would much rather that in some way this was farmed out, it was outsourced, mm -hmm. and then they can get they can just focus on looking after the rest of us. And I, exactly. do you know what? I, when, when J, just to clarify, when JJ says you're in the pay of the police, so <laughs> for the last few years I've chaired <laughs> the Police Federation Ooh, conference. Now yeah, it's all and the, no, the, yeah. Reason, the reason I say that yeah. is because within that conference, going back half a decade, there have been debates and discussions surrounding all of these areas where police have, you know, looking for more transparency, the police themselves, the Federation themselves, calling for all of this stuff. He as wants well. next discussion, year's gig. Discussion <laughs> already marked in. <laughs> Done deal. Uh, because, so it's, the, the reason that surprises me is because when you hear JJ speak uh, or hear him speak, <laughs> You think that every copper is somehow in on this, like really? They're not all bad. Iffy. I know that. I've Hardly any of them are bad. Most of them join for one reason to catch the bad guys and lock up horrible people. All right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, that, should all, that should always be, <laughs> that should always be remembered. And yeah. they're the first people you will call. No, if they're some, not. If somebody stole your unicycle that you come into work, <laughs> with, they'd be the first people you call. God, are you done? Are you done, copper? You've you still done? got your ball bearing game. <laughs> Enough. Coming up. Denmark plans to conscript women as the nation rearms to avoid war. That's next on The Talk.
A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Oi, oi, right, oi, oi, treat go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Plymouth City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on mm. the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think but, like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. This is Talk TV. And welcome back to The Talk. Now, top economists have warned that Brits are going to have to start saving more money if the economy has any chance of recovering. This is a new study from the Policy Exchange. It says historic economic transformations have relied on high investment, lifting growth and productivity. But the report claims the UK has a problem with low rates of personal savings coupled with a low rate of investment. And they're not wrong. Brits have a gross saving rate of 17%. Now, this lags well behind countries like France, Germany and Singapore. While the report says prudent personal piggy banking will help attract more investment, so will tightening the public purse strings. The policy exchange's damning conclusion is that the UK has a history of making poor public sector investment decisions or not making them at all. And you've only got to look at the creaking railway network, the promise of Heathrow's third runway, and that dream that was HS2 to realise not, it's not an unfair in assessment. Now, with 20 billion quid in public spending cuts announced in last week's budget, let's hope the financial sacrifice of our services results in the investment boom and thriving economy that we all need. The bit that I take away from this is people saving. I didn't save... <laughs> Two uh, really different stories there, I have well, to say. Well, indeed. I mean... But the saving thing, firstly... I mean, the, um, I, I didn't save for years, for, until I became, like, what I call a fully-fledged adult. Um, and then I thought, well, I better, start, <laughs> I better start... About, about half an hour ago. <laughs> I thought, I better start saving something here, because, you know, there's a point when 
You know, when the pension man comes around and goes, there's only 120 paydays to retirement, and you go, R -r wow, he's right. So saving is... Uh, is Isabel is looking confused at my... I'm looking at these are a lot idea. of things, because they're two such very different stories well, here. One, one Do of the, you save? The, the first half of the story is about encouraging the population to put more money aside, to which I say I actually want to swear at that because the vast majority of people do not have a dime, yeah. not a yeah, penny, okay. to put aside yeah. at the moment. Point. So dear old policy exchange can frankly um, do, do one, one uh, because <laughs> the cost of living is so absolutely astronomical. Yeah. And if someone like me struggles to save, and I earn a lot of money compared to most people, I'm really lucky, I can't save money at the mm. moment. I'm too busy paying my tax taxes for those taxes to be wasted on crummy public spending, yeah. which is not effective. Um, they're two separate things there. The second part of the story seems to be about us being rubbish at creating infrastructure, us wasting money on all sorts of crazily spiralling out of control projects like HS2 that starts off being a few billion and turns out to be 100 billion or whatever it is. 100% agree with that, but they're two different conversations, aren't they? But apparently, they? according to them, us personal savings is as crucial as the public, uh, as the public purse being prudent as well. And, the, and this to, patronizing... We've got to do our bit. It's almost like your country needs you. But, You've got yeah. to do your... but also this patronising phrase, piggy banking, as oh, though you're putting... give me a break. Give me a no, break. No, a, yeah. you're right, people don't... What are they meant to be saving? You know, uh. fuel bills, food prices, mortgage costs, all of that. But uh, as though you putting your pound in the in the little piggy bank every month is going to help so the general economy to grow. No. And also, <clears throat> banks could stop ripping us off so that they actually do something about investment uh, interest rates. Mm. Yeah. Therefore, people would save if they could actually get some money from their interest rates. Whereas at the moment, well, people used to retire you get zero didn't they, on for their saving. interest rates. You know, people who've done yeah. really well all their life yeah. would stick a lump in the bank yes. and literally you try live and find a savings off account the interest rate. with Be decent interest rates. You never get that. There is definitely an issue in this country with infrastructure and building. Oh, yeah. We've wasted years doing HS2 whilst other countries are building entire cities. Oh, yeah, and completely. Yeah. Completely. I mean, again, Terrible. we always come back to the Dubai example. Yeah. We built an entire metropolis in the time it's taken us not to build <laughs> yeah. HS2 or, yeah. frankly, two aircraft carriers. To be honest two with you, I don't carriers. think Dubai has the same planning restrictions as we It doesn't. Do. You and think? No. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, it's just, just crumbling roads. Wrong. I mean, you've got, like, you know, pop holes. I went down a pop hole today in my neck of the I was in a different postcode by the well, time I arrived in that. It was extraordinary. Ian, try going over a pothole on a bike. Don't ride a that's, bike that's near a pothole. Dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, try <laughs> swerving around a pothole into traffic. Like, it really is. It is really Just don't ride a bike. It's really dangerous. And I'm still recovering from having to spend £70 to get from Oxfordshire into London yesterday morning on a train that was an hour late and I had to stand. Just I mean, this. so work. why aren't people saving? Because of that. Yeah. They're right there. Mm, yeah. All these little things, they become the big things. Mm. Right, ran over. I'm really annoyed now. <laughs> <laughs> troubles at home to troubles abroad. Denmark plans to conscript women for military service for the first time to achieve full equality of the sexes, according to the nation's prime minister. The country is also planning to extend the length of national service for all soldiers from four to 11 months. All physically fit men, they sound tasty, all physically fit men in Denmark <laughs> over the age of 18 are called up for military service. But <laughs> due, to, sorry, due to enough volunteers, there's a lottery system that chooses who actually serves. Uh, Danish Prime Minister Meta Frederiksen was clear to point out the conscription extension is not in anticipation of conflict, saying, we do not rearm because we want war, we are rearming because we want to avoid it. Uh, Denmark's foreign minister also stressed that Russia does not now pose a threat to the nation. The news follows Tory MP Richard Drax's calls for unemployed Brits who turn down work to be conscripted into the British Army. Well, I mean, this seems to me fair enough if, if they're going to conscript uh, young, fit Danish men. Why not <laughs> conscript young, fit Danish women? Um, and I actually think Richard Drax's um, idea about conscription is yeah. quite a good one. I yeah, think if people are languishing on benefits, you know, a bit, of, a bit of military training, a bit of physical hard work, we'd get them off the sofa and off benefits and back into work soon enough. Well, I like the fact that you're focusing it on sort of a domestic thing. There is a bigger issue here. And I know the Danish Prime Minister, the Danish Foreign Minister is trying to play down this idea of, of Russia's threat. But we've had a lot of our own um, top brass in the UK basically talking about conscription coming back in the UK. Um, and I think that we are actually living through a much more dangerous time. Well, Grant Shapp said that this morning. Uh, he wants and 
three percent on GD of GDP on, on defence defense. spending. But you know, we've we've just had the conversation about how limited our funds are. Right? There's going to be a really difficult conversation that's going to have to be had, perhaps by you know Keir Starmer as the next Labour Prime Minister, about what we actually value in society. And this story about Danish conscription is. It's terrifying to me because I think that, you know, we are going down this route because we are we are in a much more dangerous world. I think it's... I didn't... Did, did you say they have, a, a like, a lottery where they select yeah. who has to serve? Serve, yeah. I mean, that's the lottery you don't want to win, isn't it? If oh, you I don't, don't know. If you don't want to be in the military. Oh, I see what you mean. But I know yes, people. But... I, I mean, why do we always talk about this as though it's an awful thing? I'm sorry, I know it's I right, have it's male but, friends but it's who... it's not awful no, no, wait, 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 if you wait, wait, want so to. Wait, wait, let, me, let me explain. Wait, wait, let, let me explain. It's a lottery from people who've put themselves forward. Right, so you have... Them right, them. gotcha. OK, well, that, yeah. that, that clarifies the point. Yeah. In terms of equalling it up, I mean... Well, I mean, yes, I mean... Why not? You want to join? Yeah. Why you know, not? Who, who gives a who? Who joins? Yeah. yeah. As long as you're, you know, you pass all the relevant tests. And you were ahead of the game because you once let me that VHS video called Foxy Soldiers. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to watch, but uh, I'm don't assuming watch, I'm assuming it. it's about exactly this. So. It is. Pretty uh, much. Well, you're it. ahead of the game. You're a good man, despite what they say. <laughs> this um, in Denmark, I think it's great. Uh, I think conscription is a good idea. Um, fundamentally, between the difference between Britain and Denmark. Cultural wise, is that Denmark, and I'm saying this because my grandmother is Danish, I've, I spend a lot of time there. In Denmark, they are happy to preserve their culture without being called, without people calling them racist. Mm. Over here, if you want to fly your UK for mm. uh, union, union, the you union get flag, far right. You're, yeah, you're far right. In Denmark, they want to restrict how many immigrants come in because they say it's bad for social cohesion, has to be done small amounts at a time. Yeah. Mm. Stuff like even things uh, that are ingrained in them, like yeah. crossing a road. You wait till the yeah. light is, is Same green. Same in Germany. Yeah. And like you're this... not allowed to... I don't think in Denmark you're allowed to fly foreign flags. Am I right yeah, about correct. that? Yeah, correct. Correct. Very good law, in my opinion. If you're yeah. going to... I think we should introduce the same here. Yeah. yeah. So for but, them... of course, they have a whole different... I mean, all that sounds lovely, but they have a whole different taxation system... Well, it's more tax. ...of, of making this happen. Um, yes. And so they don't need the cheap labour that, that we do. They, they don't. But so this conscription over there will go down very well. Got it. Uh, on that point, coming up, women lead the Glastonbury lineup for the first time in the festival's history. We're discussing that next here on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Plymouth City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on mm. the fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. 
The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think but, like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Breaking news just in the last few moments. Rishi Sunak has ruled out the possibility of a general election taking place on the 2nd of May. That was the area of much speculation. Isabel uh, and Salma were just uh, musing on that point as to why it might be or why Happy it might not. Happy to have been right. Just saying. Happy to have been uh, <laughs> correct on that. Uh, that, of course, is the day of the local elections. Uh, it had been widely speculated that it might happen on that day. But Rishi Sunak was asked by... Uh, a TV station, whether this was the case. He says there won't be a general election on that day, but when there is a general election, what matters is the choice. He's like listening to How Plato, boring is isn't that? He? You know, I'm surprised he didn't wisdom. say what matters is that I've got a plan and yes. Starmer doesn't have a plan. And some policies. That's it. That's, That's all he's That's what we want to hear. Well, from the general election to general disappointment now, this year's much <laughs> anticipated, apparently, Glastonbury lineup has been released, and women lead the charge for the first time in the event's history. Ooh. Dua Lipa, US hip hop artist SZA, yep. and Shania Twain take up the top slots alongside Coldplay after heavy criticism of last year's lineup. 2023 was headed by Arctic Monkeys, Guns N' Roses, and Elton John, which sparked outrage from neurotic fans who questioned <laughs> the all-white, all-male theme of the top billing artists, which organiser Emily Evis put down to a pipeline problem. The girl power billing isn't the only first at this year's Glastonbury. K-pop group 17 will become the first Korean pop group to ever play at Worthy Farm. Uh, if I had a ticket for Glastonbury, because obviously they sell out the year before, right? Mm. Or, uh, yeah. I would be returning it now and asking for a refund. I've got no interest in watching any of these people. Last year, I desperately wanted to go. Arctic Monkeys, Guns N' Roses, Elton John. That's that was a lineup. Even Coldplay? You know, does that no. For you? He, Collins likes Coldplay. This yeah. sap. He took his son. He took his six-year-old son to see Coldplay. That's right. how much he loves Coldplay. Oh. Right. It's a bit I, boring. It's a bit depressing. Do, 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 do. I actually took him do, do, do. to see Coldplay, <laughs> despite not particularly liking Coldplay. And, and I bet but it was amazing. I, yeah. I bet it well, was, it was amazing. A, it was actually, it was a massive gig. It was so... Yes. Of course, they're talented. They're huge. I mean, you've got Coldplay there. I don't think... Does it matter whether it's... You know, whether it's the boys or the girls, you know, you might, you're just picking the artists of that moment, the artists that have made big impacts. Right, I agree. You know, I mean, what's so relevant? Elton John, yeah. you know, of course, he was at the end of his doing, you know, just done his last tour. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why would you not finish with one of the biggest yeah, artists we, in the world? Yeah, we do need to address the elephant in the room, which is Glastonbury and mud, fields, camping, portable lavatories, and all of that. So you're not Which in. Is why. You're not. Look, I'm not a camper. They, they I would. Play, I would pay three hundred pounds not to go to Glastonbury. They, they play it on the telly. There's, yeah. You don't need to it's go. It's better to that on room the role. telly. You'd have to drag me by my fundamentals into that field. <laughs> exactly. To That's get what me I to mean. Sit there. The only way I would go would be a sort of glamping thing on one of those massive Winnebago. Oh yeah. Things, or I could sit on the top. Hotel. Of the of the roof and watch it from there. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> on that point, it's time for small talk. <laughs> And uh, JJ, you got the first one. Yes. Now, do you all remember this clip? Both of our parents work really hard. We're very working, working class. Be honest. I, I am being Be honest. honest. I am being what honest. What car did your dad drive you to school in? So my dad. No, did, one answer. My dad. What well, car was it? Uh, it's not a simple answer what because. What car? What did you get your dad to drive? It you depends. To school in? No, 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 no. Okay, what in the car? 80s, what? my dad had a Rolls Royce. So that um, moment uh, is made the list for the TV BAFTAs as one of the most memorable TV moments. I, I love know. that documentary. It was good. I but, absolutely but, loved That was it. a great moment. But why is that a category now? Most memorable TV moments. 
Well, how's that a category? No, it's just like five, five every, minutes. Yeah, got, scene. Everybody's got the attention span of a gnat, and that's all they can remember, <laughs> basically. That, the BAFTAs will doing. only be that in a few years to come. Yeah. Just, just be you know. a brief clip. So first the 40-second <laughs> category. <laughs> now it's the 60-second category. <laughs> and some brave soul did a two-minute programme. <laughs> Isabel, you got the next one. Um, right, ski resorts. So a new report suggests one in eight ski resorts will lose their snow this century. Um, I'm actually surprised it's not more than that. Um, most of the ones that seem to be doing the worst are in the Australian Alps. Didn't even know they had any. Oops. Southern <laughs> Alps in New Zealand. Um, and they are all going to be doomed, apparently, because of global boiling. Um, <clears> so seven out, of eight, seven out of eight ski resorts are going to be just fine. Sounds quite good to me. And in Australia, it'll be really hot. Yeah. You know where you can go skiing? Yeah. Dubai. <laughs> ski Dubai. I've seen that. I've yes. seen Fantastic. that ski resort. It's massive. What yeah. about this? Uh, there's no escape in the work from home thing. Half the country seems to be working from home for often inexplicable reasons. But would it surprise you to know that air traffic control were working from home last August Blimey. when Look. there was an outage. 750,000 passengers were stranded with the entire worrying. network collapsed over the bank holiday <laughs> and they discovered that... Air... Can you imagine, you know when you sit there on the runway about to take off and the, the pilot goes, and oh, we're just waiting for clearance from air traffic control, <laughs> just trying to get him on his mobile. I think he's in a kitchen at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake, what's going on? These were engineers. I have no idea. They couldn't un restore the system with any efficiency because they were working from home for oh. They should be in the control tower. Indeed. Yeah. Emma, what have you got for Gardens us? Gardens and friendly slugs. So gardeners shouldn't kill slugs because they're in fact beneficial for plants. That's according to the Horticultural Society. Contrary to pop popular belief, snugs, slugs and snails act as nature's cleanup crew, eating dead plants and animals and recycling the nutrients back into the soil. The Horticultural Society has launched a joint campaign with Wildlife Trust to make for people to make friends with a mollusk. I think that makes sense. I would have thought that sn no, slugs and snails plants. recycle things. They make massive and... holes yeah. in the plants. They, they, so, they, yeah, they eat yeah. not just dead plants, they eat live plants as well. That's yeah. a problem. They, but you can't put salt they, on them as some people do. They you do. can just, it kills them. That's but really horrible. It's like just wild torture. Thing is, is good and leaving right. things to Summer, be... you've got the last <laughs> one. We're going with, we're going with, sticking with the animal theme, even though we're not talking about slugs. How do you all feel about wolves? Yep. Love, love a wolf. Yeah. Love a wolf. Yeah. Love a wolf. Yeah. Do you want it? Do you want it? Nothing wrong with a wolf. Yes. Written now. Yes. Yes. They're, they're, they're reintroducing them to eat all the deer. That's uh, good. Because apparently yeah. they're good. now a problem. They're, no, they're they a fundamental part of the, of the of yeah. the. JJ yeah. used to. He had a. You had a condition. He used to think he was a wolf. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but he's all right now. <laughs> That's all we've got, I'm afraid. Thank God. And that's all we've got. Oh, have you not done yours? I'm the wolf. You're the wolf. Uh, okay. Open goal. That's it for us. Thank you to our panellists, Emma Wolf, <laughs> JJ Alitiobi, <laughs> Salma Shah and Isabel Oakshot. I'm back tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock. Until then, good night. <laughs>